All right, looking at this do now, we have an equation to solve. Uh, when we solve this equation, we need to do so by first simplifying the equation before we start doing inverse operations. So as I look at this, obviously we can't get it any more simple on this side of the equation, but we definitely can get more simple on this side of the equation. I'm going to go ahead and change this to add the opposite, just so I don't have any confusion there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my distribution. 1 half times 4 plus 1 half times negative 8h. This is 1 half times 4, which was going to give me 2. 1 half times negative 8h is going to give me negative 4h. And that is equal to 12. So simplified the expression on one side. Now I want to start doing my inverse operations. We always do inverses of additions and subtractions first. So I'm going to do the inverse of this plus 2, or this 2 plus, and that's going to be adding a negative 2 to both sides. So property of equality, I've added the same thing to both sides of the equation. This adds up to 0 because they are additive inverses, which leads me to the additive identity. 0 plus negative 4h is negative 4h plus which is equal to, now on this side, this simplifies to 10. My multiplicative inverse is to divide or multiply by the reciprocal. This gives me a multiplication of 1. Do the same thing to the other side. That gives me h is equal to negative 2.5, which is answer choice A. Looking over here, I want to go ahead and simplify this expression. So in order to do that, I need to get all of my h terms next to each other. Uh, so I have 1 half h plus h plus h plus 5 plus 3. Um, so this is 1h and 1h, so that gives me 2 and 1 half h plus 8, 5 plus 3. And I can see that that is quite clearly answer choice C, but when I look at answer choice B, that also is a simplified version or a improper fraction version of the same answer, which is going to give me 5 over 2 plus, or 5 over 2H plus 8. All right, today's aim, uh, Kipsters will be able to write and solve equations from word problems. So um, kind of this is the long standing. The whole point of doing all of the equation solving is so we can take these real world scenarios, we can model them with equations, and then use them to find out something that we don't already know. And this is the real power of equations and why we learn them. Not just so somebody can throw up a random equation in front of us and we know how to solve it, which is very cool, but not always particularly useful. But in the real world, this is particularly useful. All right. So your brother is going to college, and you, um, you no longer have to share a bedroom with him. So you decide to redecorate a wall by hanging two new posters on the wall. Um, the wall is 14 feet wide, so they've given us this measurement here, 14 feet wide. And we want to space them out um, so there's the same distance from the edge of the wall to the edge of the poster, between the posters, and from the edge of the wall to the other poster. So all three of these distances from the wall to the poster, between the posters, into the wall are all the same. Um, so we want to go ahead and model this using this particular work. Um, go ahead and see if you can't find me the answer. All right, so as you went through this, the question is, did you write an equation? If you didn't write an equation, and many of you probably didn't have to, you would have looked at this and you said, well, I have these 14 feet, and that's what I'm starting with. And if I take away the 4 feet of the poster and the 4 feet of the poster, so I take away 8, that's going to leave me with six feet of space extra. So this extra six feet of space is going to be split into these three pieces. So many of you think about this and you're like, okay, well, I'll split it into the three pieces. Six divided by three gives me two feet. And so what you've done here is you have identified through a um, kind of arithmetic method how to go ahead and 
find this solution. Now, not every situation is simple enough for you to be able to think through it like that, um, but this does help us model the idea of how we can set up and solve this equation. So we know the total distance um, is 14 feet. So I know the total is 14 feet, and I want to know what adds up to that 14 feet. Well, if I call this distance, because they're all the same, x, then I can think about it this way. It's x plus 4 plus x plus 4 plus x. So x plus 4 plus x plus 4 plus x is equal to 14. Now if I can solve this equation, then that would help me figure out what x is. And we can definitely do that by going ahead and commuting our like terms next to each other, just like we did during the do now. We're going to simplify this expression before we solve it. So x plus x plus x would be 3x plus 8 is equal to 14. Now sure enough when we solve this equation you're gonna see that you're gonna end up doing the exact same steps that you did up here which is we're going to essentially subtract 8 or add negative 8 to both sides and that's gonna give me 3x is equal to 6 and then to solve this we end up dividing by 3 just like you did over there so we get that x is equal to 2 so it's the same idea. Now let's go down and let's look at the next one. Um, we have a similar situation. It says your parents are redecorating the dining room. They want to place um, a rectangular wall sconce lights. All right, so these are just rectangular wall lights um, that are 25 inches wide along a two and two thirds foot wall. Um, so the distance between the lights and the distance from each light is the same. So we see that we have the same idea here. Now the struggle when we look at this one is that we do have different units so it's going to be hard to write an equation um, if we keep everything in the same unit. So we have a couple of choices here. We can change um, the feet to inches or we can change the inches to feet. Either way um, that's going to allow us to set up our equation and solve our equation. So personally when I look at this I want to change these feet to inches that way I can work with whole numbers and so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply this by 12 because there are 12 inches in each foot um, so I'm going to have to change that to a um, improper fraction first uh, that's going to give me 32 over 3 times 12. Um, I can actually break this down into 4 times 3 so I can cross cancel a little bit there and that's going to give me 32 times 4 is going to be 128 inches. So if we're thinking about this we have if we want to think about this um, arithmetically rather than algebraically we can think about it as well. I've got a total of 128 inches and 25 is taken up by this poster and 25 is taken up by this poster and that's going to leave me with 78 inches to work with and I have one, two, three spaces to evenly space that out between so if I divide that by three that should give me a solution of exactly 26 inches. Now, the question is, can we set this up algebraically? Well, absolutely, of course we can. Um, so go ahead, come over here, thinking about it, x being that distance, those equal distances, go ahead and write an equation to represent this um, distance.
All right, so looking at this, um, we have we can write our equation. Um, it's equal to 128. Uh, so we have x plus 25 plus x plus 25 plus x. And if you simplify that, you should get 3x plus 50 is equal to 128. Now, looking at this problem, it actually asks us to put x as the number of feet. Um, so if this was talking about feet, then we would have to go ahead and change these 50 inches into feet by dividing it by 12, and this number of inches into feet. Now this next question asks us to leave it in terms of inches, and so then we could leave our equation as 3x plus 50 is equal to 128. Either way, those expressions are the same. So it wants us to use the expression um, to write the equation and see if it can be used to find the distance. Now, we know how to solve this equation. Um, so let's go ahead and jump through this. We've actually already seen the answer. Um, so we have 30x, 3x plus 50 plus negative 50 in our equation solving. Adding the opposite to both sides, this adds up to 0, giving me 3x plus 0, which is 3x is equal to 78. Divide both sides by 3, gives me 1x, which is x is equal to 26. So what values of y make this true? 24, 25, 26. And so this is really just going through that idea of we can check to see if something is part of the solution to an equation by plugging it in. So we're going to just test that out really quickly. Um, we're going to try um, three different values here. Uh, we're going to try three different values here. Um, 3 times 24 plus 50 is equal to 128. 3 times 25 plus 50 is equal to 128. And 3 times 26 plus 50 is equal to 128. All right, so when I do this, uh, this is going to be 3 times 24, which is 72 plus 50 is equal to 128. This is going to give me 122. is equal to 128. So we know this is not true, so we know that 24 could not be a solution. Same thing with 25, there's going to be 75 plus 50 is equal to 128, which would tell me 125 is equal to 128, which we know that's not equal, so that could not be part of the solution. Then we come over here and check our work with this one, we get that 78 plus 50 is equal to 128, so 128 is equal to 128, and that's our check. That proves us that 26 is the solution to this particular expression. So let's flip on over to the other side. Okay, today we're going to work through um, what is not an uncommon problem for you to see on like a um, ACT test. And the ACT test is something that you would take um, before you go to college. Um, and I've probably said this many times before, but most of what you need to know in order to be successful on the ACT test are things that you will learn in 7th and 8th grade. And so this is the type of problem that's really thinking about, well, are we preparing you for college? If you can get this problem right, you will do much better on your test that will help colleges determine where you should be placed. So looking at this, it says the age of three consecutive sisters, or of, of three sisters are consecutive integers. So for instance, like two, three, four, or four, five, six. And it tells us the sum of their ages is 45. So this problem is going to help us get started, and it's going to give us some instructions. It says the youngest six sister is x years old. Describe the ages of the other two sisters in terms of x. Write an expression for the sum of all of their ages in terms of x 
and use that expression to write an equation that can be used to find their ages. So we're thinking about this here is our youngest youngest her value is x. Now if we're looking at consecutive integers the next sister or the second sister is going to be how many years older? Think about it, 2, 3, 4, or 4, 5, 6. The distance between the youngest sister and the second sister would be one year. So the second sister would be x plus 1. Now the third sister is another year older, or when we think about that, how many years older than the youngest sister? Well, three to five would be plus two, or four, five, six. Four to six would be two. So we can see that third sister, we can describe her age as x plus two. Now it wants us to write an equation that can be used to find all of their ages. Well, we know the sum of their ages is 45. So go ahead and write an expression. You don't um, and simplify the um, expression and equation to find their age. So sister 1 would be x plus sister 2, which would be x plus 1, plus sister 3, which would be x plus 2, is a total of 45 years old. Calculate their ages. So um, if I want to simplify this equation, I can get all of my x terms together. x plus x plus x plus 1 plus 2. That's going to be 3x plus 3 is equal to 45. Our directions here are a little bit different on my paper than on yours. Um, yours asks you to solve the equation to find the age of the youngest sister. So let's go ahead and do that. 3x plus 3. Inverse operation. Add the opposite of 3 to both sides. This adds up to 0, leaving us with 3x is equal to 45 plus negative 3 would be 42. Divide both sides by 3 to get us 1 times x. x is going to be equal to 14. So we know the youngest sister is 14 years old, which means their ages are 14, 15, and 16. Uh, a couple different ways we can check that. We can plug that back into the original equation, or we can think about this as just saying, well, if they're 14, 15, and 16, based on what we say here, does that actually add up to 45? This adds up to 15, carry the 1, and indeed this does add up to 45, so that's one way to check it. All right, let's come on over and look at this next problem. I'm going to give you a little bit of guidance through this, but for the most part you guys should be able to do this on your own. It says Sophia pays $19.99 membership fee to an online music store. If she buys two songs from a new album at a price of 99 cents each, what is the total cost? So here we're just being asked to solve something pretty simple. Um, it's just kind of getting you started within this problem and understanding it. So go ahead and write your answer. Write an expression to represent this. And then go ahead and solve the expression to find the value. So thinking through this, it's $19.99 plus 2 times 99 cents. So that's going to be $19.99. As I simplify this, $1.98, which gives me a total of $21.97. All right, so it says if Sophia purchases N songs for 99 cents, write the expression for the total cost. So 
she's still going to have to pay that membership fee. Um, so make sure you include that in your expression. But please go ahead and write an expression to represent how much the total cost would be if she purchased N songs on top of paying her membership. Sophia's friend saved $118 and is not sure how many songs she can afford um, if she buys the membership and some songs. Use the expression in Part B to write an equation that we can use to determine how many songs Sophia's friend can buy. So we know her total that she's going to be able to use is $118. And so we're setting the equation to be equal to $118. Your equation should be $19.99 plus 99 cents for however many songs. We can't really figure that out. It's going to be equal to $118. Go ahead and use that equation that you just wrote. Solve the equation to find out um, how many songs she could buy. So looking through this, uh, we have the $19.99 plus $0.99 cents per song is equal to $118. And I'm going to go ahead and add the opposite, negative $19.99. So this can add up to zero, getting me closer to having that end term by itself, $118.00. Minus $19.99. That's going to give me 99 cents times N is going to be equal to $98.01. Um, so now we have to go ahead and do that division to get us 0.99. That's just a multiplication of one, but we have to do it to the other sign. That's that property of equality. Um, so we've got some arithmetic to do here, $98.01. Nine times uh, nine goes into, oops, sorry, this is 0.99. Decimal moves two times, decimal moves two times. So 99 goes into 9,801. Uh, let's see goes in zero times, goes in zero times, goes in nine times. Uh, let's see, 99 times nine is one, 38, 81, 891, so 891.00. And as I do the subtraction, borrow becomes 8, becomes 18. I need to borrow from that, so it becomes 17. So 10 is 9. 1. And we get 891, which we know goes in exactly 9 times, so we're going to get exactly 99 songs. N is equal to 99 songs. All right, um, that's just our quick lesson for today. A um, couple of examples above um, some word problems. Um, notice that in most of these word problems, what we're describing here is the sum of some things. And it's all about being able to model what the individual things are that you're adding up to find the value of. So in this particular case, we had a fee plus uh, 99 cents per song adding up to 118. Here we had the ages of three girls, which we could represent as x, x plus 1, and x plus 2, adding up to a total of 45. And in the previous examples on the 
uh, teacher time portion, we had lengths of um, known and unknown parts of a wall, adding up to the entire length of the wall. All right, uh, flip on over to your alone time and get your practice done on the alone time.